Have I got 2023 for you? My name is David Tennant. I'm Bill Bailey. I'm Mel Gedroich. I'm Richard Ayuadi. I'm Christy Young, and in the news this year. Backstage on Russia's top satirical panel show, the guest host begins to lose confidence in the gags for this evening's performance. <laughs> In Richmond, driving past someone who's broken down, Rishi Sunak spots an opportunity to help a constituent in need. <laughs> and just outside Lisbon, it's the first day of term for the apprentices at the Cristiano Ronaldo Football School. Right, yes, now, don't tell me. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's Prince that's... Andrew. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think if that was Prince Andrew, the Bible would have caught fire. <laughs> <laughs> is it the coronation? <laughs> is it the coronation? Uh, we can only it's, hope. It's hardly crufts, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy it? What, all seven and a half hours? Every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> Who stole the show? Oh, Penny Mordant. Yes. Yeah. She was carrying the sword of state. She had this costume made specially, which is based on the Privy Council. Uh, no, this is based on the uniform of the Greek Airlines. Yeah. <laughs> no. Or the Poundland logo. <laughs> what coronation item stopped somebody at airport security this week? I know what this is. Come it's on. It's a piece of cake. Yes! It was a piece of cake and it got stopped at the airport because yep. the coronation cake, the official coronation cake, mm -hmm. um, had exactly the same density as plastic explosives. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right, Chris. Yeah. Absolutely right. I, I mean, I don't think that's something that... You never hear that on Bake Off, do you? <laughs> Quite centexy. <laughs> <laughs> According to Chef Robert Craggs, Decorating the fruit cake took 160 hours. Well, Charles wanted to look good for the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Harry not appear? There was a picture taken uh, out away from the um, National Portrait Gallery, wasn't there? Looks like an illustration for the Ladybird Book of Family Feuds. <laughs> 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 I like how they obviously said, look, we just want to catch you in a sort of casual thing. You know? <laughs> mm. Just wear what you'd normally just wear. Ca yeah. <laughs> well, at least it's a British uniform. <laughs> I can see what a double... <laughs> how have a team of chocolatiers honoured King Charles? Oh, they've created a bust of Charles. They have. Out of 17 litres of melted chocolate, Although, when this was first suggested, one unnamed member of the royal family was concerned how dark it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, do you want to see an official coronation mural commissioned by Northampton Town Council? Yes, oh, I, I, bet it's, yes. I bet it's a yeah. cracker. Go on, yep. then. <laughs> <laughs> do we still execute people for treason in this country? <laughs> This is the coronation of King Charles III, a day of pomp and pageantry, which we won't see the like of, uh, I don't know, maybe five years. <laughs> According to Prince Harry, press intrusion caused my breakup with Chelsea Davy. So even he's a bit cheesed off he's ended up with Meghan. <laughs> Hello, you've got another child. <laughs> The Privilege Committee have found that Boris Johnson did deliberately lie. He lied um, at the time to the Commons, he lied about lying later, he lied about whether he'd lied about the lying. He lied at every point and he ended up calling the committee liars. <laughs> but he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Ellen, you're looking... <laughs> but he's here tonight! <laughs> <laughs> They did recommend a 90-day suspension. At least with 90 days, you can have one day of quality time per child. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Let's turn to the ongoing COVID inquiry. Boris has sort of said, yes, I will hand over all my evidence. He's only handing over his WhatsApp messages from 2021, from when he changed phones. So, uh, yes. Is that right? So a lot of the messages we're not going to see 
and the original phone he had, he was on a boat with Rebecca Vardy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, but in his old phone. Uh, I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did the former Chief Scientific Advisor, Patrick Valance, say that Boris Johnson could only hold on to for a bit and then it goes? A Relationships. Relationships. <laughs> <laughs> what other evidence will the Covid inquiry not be hearing? He won't be hearing from Simon Case. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Why is that? He's ill. I don't know, it's this thing that happens when you're called in front of an inquiry. You just think, oh, I feel terrible. Mm. Uh... <laughs> you're correct. He's not going to uh, face the inquiry due to a medical issue. The medical issue being that he doesn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> <laughs> Boris Johnson was being quizzed about various members of his cabinet during the pandemic. What did he have to say about Matt Hancock? He supported him. He stood him. up for him, didn't Did he? he? Yeah. yeah. He said he was intellectually able. <laughs> no. Oh. Intellectually a table. <laughs> but not intellectually able. No way. It's not a glowing review, no, is it? it? It's like, that... oh yeah, he's he's capable of thought. <laughs> And what's he doing at the moment? SAS, something to do with the SAS. Channel yes. 4 celebrity SAS, who dares wins? Yes. Right. Have a look at this. 16 recruits in an inhospitable landscape next tonight, though, as the country's favourite stars and Matt Hancock all take part in celebrity SAS. Who dares wins? Let's talk about more mad people. Is it Nadine? Yes. Oh. Nadine Doris, her explosive book. <laughs> yes. The plot, which Oddly, is the one thing it doesn't have. <laughs> this book is just completely full of things that aren't true. But based on interviews with hundreds and hundreds of people in her head. <laughs> <laughs> she cunningly disguises her sources by giving them code names such as Skyfall, Money Penny, Doctor No, <laughs> and M. No sign of Q though, particularly at her book signing. <laughs> Don't know who that is. <laughs> uh, did it used to be on Rainbow? No. <laughs> it's um, Donald Trump who has been arrested in New York and uh, there's worse to come. He was arrested over the hush money to the Stormy porn Daniel. star. Yeah. If she'd been, say, a pole dancer working in Britain. Yeah. Oh, Ian, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Here he is with his speech after his court appearance. Yes. I did everything right and they indicted me. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they want to do that? He's actually using an English court to yeah. sue a former spy, Christopher Steele, over allegations that Trump held orgies and engaged in perverted sexual behaviour of the water sports variety. Is he suing them for slander or for telling? Well, <laughs> I think it's... No, that's a good point. He's not actually suing for libel. No, it's data right. protection. It's a data <laughs> breach. <laughs> in other news, Joe Biden has announced he will stand again in 2024. Launching his bid to be re-elected as president, Joe Biden announced a minimum tax rate for the very wealthy, saying no billionaire should be paying less tax than a construction worker or a cop. Or any of the village people, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's the National Television Awards. Uh, this morning's probably winning an award there. And uh, my brother's done what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is the this morning where Philip Schofield has had to leave after 20-odd years of presenting the daytime uh, live show. I mean, I suppose it's always going to yes. be really difficult, isn't it? You know, when there's a bit of rift between a much love long-running TV duo. <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret to your success as a pair? We don't talk to each other outside of a recording. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that I find funny is, as, as a politician, any time we get into trouble or hit the news, there's, mm. you know, camera crews outside our door all the time. Mm. I haven't seen any pictures of Phil at all since this broke. It's almost like he's done a runner. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I gather he's 
he's no longer on the Prince's Trust, is that right? He was dropped as an ambassador, yes. Yes, because he was unfaithful to his wife. <laughs> the Prince's <laughs> Trust. <laughs> Daytime telly, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I love daytime telly too, but I spent time in jail, so. You know, <laughs> Despite leaving this morning, Philip has stated that he will continue to present Dancing on Ice alongside Holly Willoughby, and they'll save on the budget because the rink's going to be frozen just by the atmosphere <laughs> between them. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's still prime minister. One year. <laughs> That's the next prime minister. God. <laughs> Is it uh, something to do with HS2, by any chance? Yes. Yeah. Because they're following on their policy, stop the boats and also the trains. <laughs> what did Suella Berman do to upset people? She stood on a dog's tail. She stood on a dog's tail? Yes. You can't do that. <laughs> a guide dog? Yeah, but, you know, that's what Suella Deville does, you know? <laughs> The Greek Prime Minister came over to have a meeting with Rishi Zunak, who then cancelled it. I had a complete hissy fit. I mean, he's actually known as Techi Sunak now. <laughs> do you want to see how the Greek media reacted to the snob? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah right. let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> but for those of us who don't speak Greek... <laughs> This is the government that four days ago said, we're going to change the law over Rwanda... Yeah. ..so that we can ship people live over to Rwanda. <laughs> we can't ship some old figures back anywhere. That would be against the law. Well, why don't we just ship them to Rwanda and then let the Greeks <laughs> deal with them? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> what else has Rishi been pushing to the nation more recently? What's he very keen for us all to do? Maths. Maths. His school has the school he used to go to as a private art collection. I just thought, like, my school had a private art collection, but it was like a cock and balls behind the bank shed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a private art collection, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I should point out, obviously, we've been bashing the Tories a lot, and in the interest of balance, I've been given these special uh, balancing cards. Yes. post Lineker, <laughs> I have to say, Keir Starmer is a dot-eyed ponce. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem the Conservatives constantly leave a massive open goal, and Keir Starmer's just kind of behind it, vaping and playing Wordle. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the Labour Party conference in Liverpool, where the most exciting moment was Keir Starmer getting glittered. The protester, no one quite knows what he was actually protesting because it was very long and complicated, yes. and he was still explaining yes. it as he was being dragged past <laughs> us. I thought it was someone from Just Stop Strictly. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's in the cosmos. <laughs> Actually, isn't it? The security at Labour conference was unbelievable. Tory party conference, there was airport security. Yeah. Well, then how did Liz Truss get in? <laughs> <laughs> Someone on Twitter actually pointed out that if Liz Truss lives until she's 95 years old, then she'll have spent more days at the Senator than she did as Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see Pretty Patel and Nigel Farage oh, themselves? No. It's not often you see a double Nazi salute, is it? <laughs> <laughs> According to the Daily Mail, last year, Sunak's local council approved his plans to build a 40-foot heated swimming pool along with a gym, tennis court and pool house with hot tub. Who do you think he is? Captain Tom's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Luton Town Football Club have won promotion to the Premier League. What sets Luton Town apart from the other Premier League teams? They're near Luton. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and their ground, Kenilworth Road, is quite a small ground. And it's right in the middle of sort of uh, council houses, or, or certainly houses anyway. So you sort of walk almost through people's gardens, don't you, to get, to get into the ground. So it's quite, it's quite quaint. So as a consequence, the away fans who visit for matches are going to have to enter the stadium through someone's house. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Through someone's house at the away end. It's just your typical two up, 10,000 capacity stadium down. <laughs> We're going to stick with football. Why has a statue of former River Plate manager Marcelo Gallardo been getting a lot of coverage? Oh, it's got to be a bad likeness, isn't it? He's got a big head that makes him look like a pumpkin. <laughs> it's not his head. He's got a knee that makes him look like a pumpkin. <laughs> I'm guessing it's his penis, is it? <laughs> That's very kind of you. <laughs> Ex-footballer Gary Neville. He's come mm. up with an excellent invention. You can never really retire if you love work and you are relentless. But what you can have is mini retirements during the year. And that's what I've tried to do. I don't do it very well. So, I, for instance, this weekend, I'm going to Spain Friday till Monday morning. <laughs> I call that the mini retirement. <laughs> so, it's a weekend. <laughs> It's a weekend. It's a mini retirement. It's where I basically can say for three days, I'm there and I'm, I'm basically taking it. You know, I don't think about work. I will. But, and sometimes some of my best, my best ideas come when I'm on these types of trips. But then in six weeks, I'll have another mini retirement for five days or four days. Why am I thinking I'm going to stop for six months and sort of have a sabbatical? That's not probably going to happen with people like you or I, because we just basically don't work that way. So to have lots of mini retirements during the years that I've tried to do in the last few years, I'm not sure I'm doing it very successfully. They're called the holidays. holidays. <laughs> Staying with sport, why was the World Snooker Championship interrupted? Oh, yes, yeah, there was a guy that got up on the table and, uh, you know, threw some orange paint around and uh, they had to sort of uh, postpone that particular play. Let's have a look at it. Well. I don't quite know what that was for. These terrible, terrible scenes here at the Crucible. Is that Rob Walker there? The, Go on, uh, Rob. Yeah. He's got the uh, marigolds on his nose. Go on, Rob. Fair play to him. One of the voices you heard there was uh, Jimmy White, who knows a thing or two about hoovering powder off a table. <laughs> China's Ding Junhui was penalised after playing in brown trousers rather than the required black. He did change from brown to black, but there was quite a delay as first he had to put on blue trousers <laughs> and then pink ones. <laughs> <laughs> in Hartlepool, Keir Starmer's advisers suggest he should move on after chatting for 45 minutes to a patient who had only come in with an ingrown toenail. <laughs> In Leicestershire, one family successfully trains their pet to tell them when a yoghurt is past its sell-by date. <laughs> On a morning walkabout in Brighton, Ed Davey realises he may have overdone it with his Lynx Africa. <laughs> As food bank usage reaches record levels in the run-up for Christmas, Number 10 devises a plan to make sure local school children get their fair share. <laughs> and in old Windsor, a power-mad local official authorises the demolition of Prince Andrew's rented cottage. <laughs> It's a new round, it's the equation of news. Find X, tell me what story it relates to. Oh, yeah, I know this. It's a bag of tools that mm. was uh, dropped from the space station is circling the Earth. Apparently, you could see it this week, uh, if the sun was catching it in the right direction, you could see the tool bag going across <laughs> the sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make up something like that. <laughs> Builders everywhere going, oh, I can't finish it. <laughs> the tool bag's in space, orbiting <laughs> the Earth. 
Do you want to see the uh, moment when it fell from their grasp? Oh, I think I do. Yeah. I, I saw it before, but it's to see it again. There it is. There he goes. Oh, oh shit, he's gone. Look. <laughs> <laughs> One tool slip for man. That's, uh... One tool slip. <laughs> Is that so they can put a... There are no tools stored in this space station, OK? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. God, that robot's at a really odd height. Um... <laughs> <laughs> is this the AI conference? Yes, it is. The man from Google who's been working on AI for a decade or something has left and said it's incredibly dangerous. Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of AI, resigned from his job at Google this week. He said, I'm not that optimistic because I don't know any examples of more intelligent things being controlled by less intelligent things. Oh. Well, you should try living in Britain. <laughs> Which well-known figures are keeping themselves in very good trim? Who's looking hot, do you mean? Yeah, we're going to have a look. Why have you got metal nipples? <laughs> well, you ought to ask yourself, Paul, cos it's you. <laughs> that... <laughs> yeah? <laughs> you want to get a metal detector around those sharpish. Mm. It's an AI-created image of what people would look like at the peak of physical fitness, and that's you, Paul, at your physical peak of fitness. <laughs> Ian, do you want to get ready, Ian? <laughs> Blimey. Apple have also introduced a modification to its autocorrect function. Do you know about this? Yes. <laughs> it no longer autocorrects the F word to ducking. It's a bit confused, though, but if you have a garden fate and you've got a barrel full of apples in it, you say, come along to our fate where you can be <laughs> fucking apples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will there be a Granny Smith? <laughs> Pink lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been, have you? <laughs> In other news, a T Rex has been sold at auction. Here it is. The skull came from Montana. The body was dug up in Wyoming, and they went all the way to Switzerland to get that lady in the cardigan stuck to that pole. <laughs> How much do you think it's worth? 1.7 million. A bit more than that. Wasn't Leonardo DiCaprio bidding for it? Oh, was he? It must be too old for him. <laughs> <laughs> What did we find out about Tyrannosaurus teeth? Oh, they're um, ir irregular. According to the Sun, they are not uh, permanently exposed, like in Jurassic Park, but were actually covered with scaly lizard-like lips. Let's take a look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. This is a rusty pole in Exmouth. It was removed mysteriously. No one knows where it went. No yeah. one knows who took it. Yeah. And uh, locals are furious. They're furious. It stood on an Exmouth nature reserve since 1909, and according to ITV News, has been catapulted to legendary status. <laughs> uh, let's have another look at the poll. <laughs> <laughs> on TripAdvisor, there is a suggested visiting duration of one to two hours. <laughs> What have locals done as a tribute? Have they laid flowers in its place? Should we take a look? Yes. Well, the group would love to see the pole reinstated, but they have found a piece of concrete, at least, which they believe was left behind <laughs> and maybe a suitable base for a plaque in memory of the rusty pole. <laughs> Does it say rust in peace? <laughs> Oh, no, this must be the uh, Spurs versus Liverpool game and the failure of VAR to correct a referee's mistake. Yeah, and I was furious. Were you? <laughs> well, you can see, Ian, what's going on here, can't you? It appears to be football. Well, yes. <laughs> see, what it is... <laughs> this match was played during a partial eclipse of the sun. You see, <laughs> half of the pictures in the dark. But we've actually got the audio yes. of the VAR yes. room. Mm. Uh -oh. Would you like to hear it? Yes, yes. Uh, please. Discussion. So, 2D line on the VAR. I'll, I'll check complete. Check complete. It's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Off. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, the on-field decision was offside. 
Are you are you happy with this? Yeah. Are you happy with this? Off oh, so so Go. Yeah. That's, no, that's what it does. What? On field decision was offside. Are you happy with this image? Yes, yeah, onside. The image we gave him is onside. He's played. He's yeah. gone offside. I know you feel strongly about it, Ian. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> he supports Royal Engineers. <laughs> <laughs> and do they have to swear? They are being sponsored by. Um... <laughs> swear Fred three five six. That's it. <laughs> Who buzzed? Kirsty. Tattoo. Absolutely. Tattoo, which was the winning song. This is the news. That, the most watched Eurovision song contest ever, was held in Liverpool on Saturday. But I read in the paper that you dressed up as a milkmaid. <gasps> <gasps> Again? <laughs> Just say seriously, I was really worried that I'd underdone it, and I... <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. That is appalling. Over I'm amazed you don't have to pay for that on some obscure <laughs> channel. <laughs> now, this year's Eurovision was widely thought to have been taken more seriously by the actors. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the impressive work of a BBC British sign language interpreter dealing with Finland's entry. Some UK pundits questioned the presence of several non-European countries in a European competition, such as Australia, Israel, and most of all, Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Paul? The performance of the bodyguard, I think it might have been in Manchester, where it, it, they couldn't finish the show because some members of the audience got quite boisterous, who might have had a few to drink, who started singing, joining in, and they couldn't hear, the rest of the audience couldn't hear the performer on stage. We can have a listen, see if you can pick out the untrained voices. <laughs> <laughs> It's a new theme, isn't it? I mean, audiences are not being content uh, just to watch. They want to join in. And they've had trouble at, at the Globe. When you say joining in at the Globe... Yes, now yeah. is the winter of our discontent <laughs> great glorious summer. <laughs> but it's Dan Yerk! <laughs> <Right. laughs> this sort of thing has happened at yep. that venue before, apparently. Uh -huh. um, what had they done to try and stop incidents like this occurring? Was it polite laminated notices? Yeah. It, y yes! <laughs> <laughs> and yet it still goes on. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are we headed? Where, where are we headed? It's yeah. the end of civilization, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is a story that I saw the other day. That apparently somebody has determined that cats have over 100 different expressions. I would like to see <laughs> each one of those 100 <laughs> different expressions. I mean, that one's obviously enjoying a visit to the vets. <laughs> um... Yeah, they have 270. No, they different... don't. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, every every cat, cat looks like one. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number one, nostalgic. Second, patriotic. <laughs> Three, slightly disappointed. There's no fish for breakfast. <laughs> Watching GB News. <laughs> Five, presenting GB News. <laughs> no viewers. So let's, let's just try and see if we can guess any of these cats' emotions. Right. Yes, let's yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right, number one. Yeah. <laughs> I miss the Bee Gees. <laughs> Well, that's friendly because it's got its ears turned slightly down. Apparently. Oh, right, OK. Oh, I know that. Ah. I recognise that one from my old cat. That, that expression says, I'm sorry, I thought that was just going to be a fart. <laughs> <laughs> Why might Chris Packham be relieved this week? Well, he was cleared by the police for sniffing chicks. Oh. Y yes, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> How long has it been against the law to sniff a chick? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
I've been doing it all my life. <laughs> Chris Packham yeah. has been cleared of sniffing a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. I always wondered what the last episode of this show would look like. <laughs> Chris Packham has been cleared of sniffing a bird. During an episode of Spring Watch, a goshawk chick was sniffed, weighed and sexed. Sounds a bit like my wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start, you. <laughs> Why am I getting sex? the blame? <laughs> well, I've got a vo voice in my ear. What? She's not wearing an ear. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. King Charles, Noel Gallagher, Stentor and Ross Kemp. Ian. It's about having a loud voice. Ah, oh, Stentor. Is that where Stentorian comes Stentorian from? Stentorian comes from. Oh. He was a herald. He was the, the Brian Blessed <laughs> of his day. He had an incredibly loud voice. So, and topical then... news quiz, that's the one I know. <laughs> Ross Kemp, there was a very famous meme of him at the World Cup and he was topless shouting. So he shouted. Is it about shouting? Yes, but who's the odd one out there? King Charles. All right, why is that? Well, because he doesn't shout, or the other shout. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right, it is King Charles. It is King Charles, why I said it. It yeah. is King Charles. He's the only one that's named after a Spaniel. <laughs> <laughs> is Stentor the only one that can pull his tongue out really far? <laughs> <laughs> They're all too loud, apart from King Charles, who advocates playing the bagpipes. <laughs> Stentor, according to Homer, was as powerful as the voices of 50 other men. And he is said to have died as a result of a shouting contest... Oh, with, with Hermes? With Hermes, yes. They lost his package one too many times. <laughs> <laughs> Why does the king think we should be playing the bagpipes? It's very good for your breathing. Yes, that's right. No, it's good for your health. A Scotsman advised that beginners may wish to find a large field to play in. <laughs> But I prefer a panel show to practice on. Oh, oh yeah. So, there we go. We'd never done that before. <laughs> Davina McCall, Ian Duncan Smith, Alex James, and Noel Edmonds. They're all back. That's, that makes them the odd one out, does it? <laughs> <laughs> They're, all back. They're all back. They're all back. They're all back except Ian yeah. Duncan Smith. Uh, no. Alex James makes cheese. Makes cheese. Mm. Davina McCall likes cheese. Likes mm. cheese. Noel Edmonds is made of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> It's pure, pure Edam. It's pure Edam. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, you are not on the right track. Oh. Shall I give you a clue? Yeah, okay. go on. Then you might is it well. falling out with you... neighbours? Because he. Ooh. Is yeah. It... Oh, yeah. Because falling um, out with neighbours. Noel Edmonds has moved to New Zealand and yeah. is being slightly tetchy with his neighbours. Uh, Davina McCall lives in Guernsey and has murdered everybody. <laughs> on the... <laughs> <laughs> you better tell us. Okay. All right. All of them yeah. have upset. Uh, people from other countries, apart from Davina McCall, mm. who's upset with herself for inflicting Donald Trump on the US. She claims that her stint as the host of Big Brother led to the explosion of reality TV shows that thrust people like Donald Trump into the limelight. Davina, if you're listening, it's not your fault. On the other hand, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's the BBC's balance, yeah, balance, you see. Balance. You get both sides. <laughs> Does Davina centralise herself in the narrative of world history? <laughs> yeah, she started the First World War by murdering <laughs> Archduke yeah. Ferdinand. Yeah. Yeah. He was the first one voted out of the Big Brother house. Yeah. <laughs> no, she does at least accept responsibility for this. Now, would you like me? 
to be the cat. That's mummy. Delicious. Why have you shown us that? <laughs> I had to watch that four times today in the rehearsals. Oh, oh, man. Where you Brutal. get your kicks has got nothing to do with me. <laughs> How did Blur bassist and cheese magnate Alex James upset another country? He said that cheese was bad. Ooh. <laughs> he ticked off the French by claiming that brie was actually invented in Ireland um, and that champagne was actually developed in Somerset. Oh. Yeah. He's done too many drugs. Oh. <laughs> or not enough. <laughs> Balance. Balance. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess the headline that the Daily Star went with to, to, to cover this story? So, OK, you've got the Daily Star, right? They've got yep. to come up with a headline. Alex James story, is that? Alex, Alex James. Right, yeah. Who's, who's, who's in Blur. He's upset the French. What yep. are you thinking? French cheesed off. Sacre Blur. Oh, Sacre Blur. In one. Oh. In one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I should have been a journalist. Should have been. <laughs> Right, what country yeah. has Noel Edmonds caused trouble in? New Zealand. New Zealand. Right? Absolutely yeah. right. He spent over £14 million pounds yeah. buying up properties in order to create his own village, which, do, we, do you know what he's calling it? Crinkly Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> if only. It's called River Haven. Oh. Who has Noel fallen out with then? Local yeah, with the council. council, the local council. Mm -hmm. yeah. They wanted to put a bike track through a corner of his land to yeah. avoid a motorway, to which Noel Edmonds reasonably responded, you need your heads cutting off and your brains replaced. <laughs> Would you like to see an image here of Crinkly Bottom? Yes, yes. please. Yes, please, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you showing this? this... <laughs> His lawyer sent a letter complaining that ITV broke its contract by giving viewers a glimpse of Nigel's naked asshole last week. <laughs> well, if he'd signed a no asshole contract, he wouldn't have been able to go. <laughs> <laughs> Any lawyer will tell you that. Any lawyer will tell you that. Time now for the missing words round, and we start with... Dog costs owner fortune in vet bills because what? Secret financial arrangement with vet. <laughs> I'm taking that Labrador to the vet every week. <laughs> <laughs> Dog costs yep. own a fortune in vet bills because he's so good at acting sick. This is the story of Jack Russell Mix Jacquini, who keeps pretending to be ill. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Pizza Company allows customers to pay what? Is it in Woking when they're actually in Belgravia? <laughs> Pizza company allows customers to pay with sexual favours. <laughs> Is that a meat feast or are you just pleased to see me? <laughs> Pizza company allows customers to pay after they've died. Oh. One pizza that customers can order is the four cheese triple stuffed crust mega meat delicious pepperoni passion with extra garlic dip. So I imagine they'll be paying for that one quite soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, woman in Scotland terrified to enter her kitchen because what? Full of police. <laughs> 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 Woman in Scotland terrified to enter her kitchen because of squirrels that live there. Next, electrician finds what under the floorboard at Oxford University? F.R. Leavis. <laughs> <laughs> the ceiling to the floor below. Yes! <laughs> Gotta be. That's the one. Electrician finds stash of dirty mags from the 1940s. <laughs> Mags in the 1940s called Ankle. Yeah. <laughs> Next, Britons have an average of 24 what a year? Prime Ministers. <laughs> <laughs> Mini retirements. <laughs> yeah. Britons have an average of 24 biscuit arguments a year. Oh, God, the number of times I've argued with a biscuit. <laughs> According to a McVitie's survey, 33% of Brits want to see ginger nuts kept separate. <laughs> From what? Just like at the coronation. <laughs> <laughs> Next, police find Boris Johnson what? Unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was just going to say guilty. Oh. <laughs> no, that's better. Police find Boris Johnson is not drunk driver in the Netherlands. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> this is the news that a drunk driver in the Netherlands handed over a fake ID with Boris Johnson's name and picture. Here it is. <laughs> Police realised immediately it wasn't Boris Johnson as the suspect admitted he was in the wrong and apologised. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Creator of the world's hottest chilli, what? Dies on toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Tries his own creation and is doubled over in pain for four hours. No, I think we'll right. yeah, give that to you. Yeah. Uh, Ed Curry, the creator, and his wife and children all eat a lot of chilli peppers. Mm. Runs in the family. <laughs> Next, man who takes pet duck to the pub, what? Stuck with a large bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard! There we are. Man who takes pet duck to the pub says it's a good conversation starter. Now, this is Gillingham man Mark Collier with his duck called Dog. <laughs> Duck is a good conversation starter and, in fact, a good starter. It's also a rather ambiguous phrase, isn't it? The duck is a conversation starter. It's if the duck goes around the pub saying, what was the best holiday you ever had? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a real introvert and the duck is just is his wingman. Yeah, yeah wingman. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're on fire! Yeah. I didn't even know he's doing didn't it. Even I didn't even know he's doing it. And finally, scientific research claims what are the best lovers? Scientists. Scientists. <laughs> 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 that is right. That is right. It is. It absolutely oh, it is. is right. Right. Oh. <laughs> but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Bishop complains about unfair identity parade. <laughs> <laughs> Another terrible edition of Hide That Camel. <laughs> <laughs> Woman complains about unfairness of identity parade. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the best episode ever of Hide That Camel? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave you with news that in Berkshire, there's a mix-up in the celebrity bake-off tent when one of the contestants realises they've accidentally iced a hat. <laughs> <laughs> As he turns up for his annual prostate examination, Jeremy Corbyn is alarmed to see there's been a last-minute change of doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a warehouse rave in Hackney Wick after the bar runs out of bottled water. There are concerns that Michael Gove may be a little dehydrated. <laughs> Happy Christmas. Checking possible wrong score. 6 4 to Ian on the board. That's fine. Check complete. Check complete. Well done, boys. Good process. Wait, wait, wait. On field decision was 6 4 Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Win for, win for Paul. That's wrong, Daz. It should have been for Ian. Delay, delay, stop, stop the show, delay. I can't, we've played on. <laughs>